This is BATH 99. We're going to look at section 3.2. Uh, talk about functions, uh, domain and range of the functions. And uh, domain is the inputs and the range is the, the outputs, essentially, the x's and the y's. So we've talked about functions. We've talked about a couple different ways to represent them. But let's talk about finding the domain and range on them. So here's a function, g of x. Notice this is a function defined as a set. It's a collection of points, a collection of inputs, x's, and outputs, y's. So if I look at this function, it is a function. Every input has a, has a unique output, um, and one only one. And let's see, my domain is, I could say it's the collection of inputs. So it's basically the list of the x values, negative uh, 5, 0, 5, 10, negative 15. These are the possibilities. These are the things that I can input into this. It's defined for those inputs. Notice 7 is not in my domain because 7 is not listed on here. I can't plug 7 into this because I don't know what its output would be. Now then my range would be my y values, my, my, my output. So 4, 0, negative 4, uh, negative 8, negative 12. And it's kind of nice. Uh, domain and range, uh, input output also we could think of that as x and y and what i like about this is like this isn't mathy this just happens but these are all alphabetized the same way d to r i before o x before y all right if i look at this graph and think about its domain and range so its domain are the x values everything that this has inputs for so it basically is wherever there's stuff for this range, and it, um, for this domain, for these inputs. And it looks like it's going up by five, so I'm gonna do some estimating. If this is five, that might go back, I don't know, three years, something like that maybe. I'd say it looks like it starts at about 1972 or 1973, and it's continuous. So it has these like, 1991's in here, 19, according, since this is a straight line, 1991.2 is in there. Uh, so it goes from here and it goes all the way out, it looks like it goes all the way out to 2000. If I have a range of data, uh, listing them all would be impossible. So I'm going to write this as, uh, the year 1972 is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 2010. That's my domain, that's my, my, uh, whole uh, collection of x values in here. Now my range will be my y values and it looks like the lowest it gets is about here and the highest it gets is just about there. So I know that I'm estimating here but I would say oh uh, let's see this goes by 200 that might be I don't know maybe 150 it's okay to estimate is less than or equal to y and the highest it, look, it looks like it gets maybe just a little past 2,000, barely. So maybe, uh, let's say 2010, 2,010,000 uh, barrels per day. There's my domain and there's my range. All right, if I had a function, something like g of x equals x squared minus 1. So if I want to think about my domain and range for this, my domain is my possible input. So if I think about x squared, I can square anything. So my domain, um, I'll say, is any number. I'll say any real number. We could say anything from negative infinity to infinity. We'll talk about how to write that in a sec. Now my range is my outputs. And I, I might have to, maybe if I graph this, it would be easier to see. Or maybe if I think about it, uh, the lowest this can get, if I square something, it's going to turn it positive, and a positive number minus 1, um, or 0. 0 would work as well. Like the lowest that just x squared gets is 0. Negative 1, if I subtract 1 from 0, the lowest that this gets is negative 1. So my range, I'd say uh, negative 1, how about we say x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Notice it can just go forever from there. Uh, now, again, if you can't just visualize it, you might want to graph it. We know that this graph looks like this. If not, you know, plug it in Desmos or put it in your graphing calculator. And you can see that any x value works. This keeps going on forever in both directions. And the lowest it gets is negative.
So if I think about functions and finding their domain and range, there are a couple things to look for. Uh, if I have squaring or maybe to some even power, I know I'm going to have a minimum value or maybe a maximum value if that's negated. But it won't go on forever in both directions up and down for range. But for my domain, if I look at this first function, I can plug anything I want into here. So for domain, I'm going to say any number. We'll talk about different ways to write that too in a minute. Range on this. Now, if you don't know it, um, x cubed looks like this. It goes on forever in both the directions. So this will give me any outputs as well. All right, let's look at g here. 7 divided by x. Now, this is interesting to me because I'm, there's some division going on. This is something to look for. Um, dividing is okay. I can divide by just about anything, but I can't divide by zero. So I'm going to say my domain, um, one way to, to write this is just, uh, instead of saying what x can be, say what it can't be. x can't be zero, because I can't divide by zero. And then my, my range for this, 7 over x, my range is going to be anything. Any real number. That's the symbol for real numbers um, that are like that, or you could write real number. Well, again, we'll talk about different ways to write these. Um, so looking at this one, there's division going on. So it looks to me like x cannot be, well, what makes this equal to zero? So if you have division going on, you want to know the domain, you can't divide by zero. So set that denominator equal to zero. Let's subtract two from us. Oh, maybe just add x equals this. And it looks like x equals two. So notice this is me solving for when the denominator equals zero. So x cannot be that value. And the range for this one, hmm. I'm not sure. So maybe we should graph it. So let's do that. I'm going to bring up Desmos, or you could use your graphing calculator. And uh, let's see, what was that? What was that function? Uh, x plus 2 over 2 minus x. Okay, see how it looks like it goes up and down forever in both directions? So it looks like my, uh, my domain would be just about everything except see how it settles down to here and settles down to here it looks like it will never be one which makes sense to me um, because x plus two and then two minus x those will never be the same value so my range will be uh, y will never equal one okay big thing though with domain if you can't divide by zero so you want to make sure you're not dividing by zero uh, next thing with domain, taking the square root of a negative number, that gives us some, uh, some problems, some issues. Like we get complex numbers, we get irrational numbers. I'm sorry, imaginary numbers. So if I have a radical, if I have a square root going on, I've got to take that thing. I have to say the thing that's being square rooted has to be, uh, can't be negative, which means it has to be zero or positive. So this thing that was being square rooted must be greater than or equal to zero, right? This is me finding my domain. So subtract 15 from both sides, divide by five. There's my domain. X must be greater than or equal to negative three. Because if it's anything less than negative three, it makes me take the radical of the square root of a negative number. Now that's with a square root. A cube root can be negative, right? Like the cube root of negative eight is asking two to what, uh, sorry, what to the third power gives me negative eight? And the answer is negative two. So this one, the domain is any real number. You can plug anything you want into that. All right, so we have a couple of ways to write these things. I've just been writing them as inequalities. So here's some notation. If I want to write an inequality, four is less than x, which is less than or equal to negative 12. There's set builder notation, which is kind of silly, I think. X, you write it, X is such that, and then you just write this again. So set builder notation to me isn't, isn't all that interesting. It just is like more symbols. 
it's the set of numbers of x such that these conditions are true for x. Now, if I think about this inequality, here's 4, here's 12 on a number line. Notice 4 is less than, strictly less than x, so it can't be equal to it. So I'm going to do an open circle there. But x is less than or equal to 12, so I'm going to do a closed circle there. So notice it's all the values between 4 and 12. So here, this is how we do this for interval notation. Um, if it's strictly less than or strictly greater than, you use, uh, use those kind of regular brackets. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you use hard brackets. So if I look at this, it's going to be from, I'm running from 4 to 12 not including 4, including 12. I know that this looks like a point, but it's in interval notation. It's not a point. It means we have a range of numbers from 4 to 12, not including 4, but including 12. So let me think about how I could write that for some of these up here. Um, any real number, if it can be anything, it runs from negative infinity all the way to infinity. Now, infinity is not a number, so we, we don't include it. We use soft brackets for that. Um, how about this one? X is not equal to zero. I'm going to pull a little space down here to do this. X is not equal to zero. Here's what's going on. I'm going from negative infinity to zero, right? But I'm not including zero. And then I'm going from zero to infinity. And I have these things that I want. I want to say it's both of these things at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a symbol from set theory that's called a union symbol. And what that means is you throw those, uh, you throw those two conditions together at the same time. So I'm going to put a U in there. A, this is union. This means this set whoops, connected to that set. So let's take a look at this. Uh, if I had something that looked like this, this is from 1 to 3 inclusive. So I'm running from 1 to 3. And they're both part of the set. And that's union with 5 to infinity. I can't include infinity because it's not a number. And 5's open. So it's strictly greater than 5. So it would look like this. Or if I were to do it for this one, uh, from 4 to 7. 4 is excluded, 7 is included, and that's going to put together with the set 13 to 19 inclusive. So 13 to 19, including 13. All right. Here's some more graphs. Let's do domain and range on these again, and let's use that, um, that interval notation for it. So I notice that this, this one's kind of tricky because it looks like it's, if I do domain, this one, it goes from, I'm just looking at the x values, from negative 3 to 1. To see how, like, if I just, like, could stand here and look this way at it, this would collapse onto the x-axis over those. So those are the only places where there's x values. So it goes from negative 3 to 1, my inputs do, but negative 3 is excluded and 1 is included. And my range on this, uh, this this point here is excluded, but this point's included. So it looks like it goes from zero all the way to negative four. You might argue this is a little lower than negative four, but, and they're both included. They're both part of the solution. Remember, range is all the possible y values. Like, just think about it collapsing up to the y-axis. Where would it leave? Uh, domain, I think I, I, I may have said range last time. I hope I did. And domain, is it collapsing onto the x value? Where does it touch? So let's think about this one. Domain. Those x values. It starts at negative 4, and it looks like it just goes on forever. So x is greater than negative 4 or equal to. So it goes from negative 4 to infinity. You don't include infinity, but the negative 4 is included. Okay. And the range, those are those y values. Looks like it's the lowest it gets is zero. That is part of the solution, but it keeps going up to positive infinity. All right, so there's my domain and range of each of those 
uh, graphs. So one thing I, I want to talk about is uh, what are called piecewise functions. So piecewise functions have conditions. And this is what I mean. A uh, cell phone company uses this function to, below, to determine the cost in dollars per G gigabytes of data transfer. <laughs> Such an antiquated problem. Uh, so C of G, that's the function. It's 25 if zero is less than G, uh, which is less than two. So G is between zero and two. It's 25 bucks. After, as G gets, hits two or gets bigger, then it's $25 plus 10 times G minus two. So notice that there's a flat fee for a while. It's 25 bucks from zero to two. But then once you hit two, it starts to increase. You get like this 10 times, um, basically how many gigabytes you use past two. So if I wanted to evaluate C of 1.5, you look at the value, what, um, your input, your G value here is 1.5. That's between zero and negative two, so you use this rule, so it must be. If I wanted to say what's uh, what's C of seven, well C is greater than two, so I would use this rule. So I would evaluate it as twenty-five plus ten times seven minus two. Uh, seven minus two is five, so that's fifty plus twenty-five, so it would be seventy-five. That's the way that these piecewise functions work. Notice if I think about this this function, this piecewise function. Uh, the domain are my inputs. I can't have zero, but I can't have anything bigger than zero. Whoops, zero is not included, so soft bracket. My range on here, 25 is the lowest this goes. And then the price could just keep getting higher. So there would be my range. Now let's take a peek at this one. Just another piecewise function. Notice it has three conditions. So if I asked us to evaluate F of 1.5, and you look at your conditions first and you say 1.5 meets this condition so that would be three again the way that these works is there's just like think about what the condition is and then you apply that rule if f is 10 that's greater than 2 so f of x would be x which is 10 um, and that that sort of thing one thing i want you to notice on these is notice it says x is less than or equal to one, and then it says here x is strictly less than one. Um, these are written so that there's no ambiguity, right? One isn't in both of these. One is in this one, but not in that one. All right, there is a quick little introduction to domain range. Give those problems a try. Let me know what questions you have.